My name's Regan. I work for Anthony J. Lyon, Detective Bureau. They call me the Lion's Eye. Jeff Regan Investigator, starring Paul DeBoff as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. So stand by for mystery, suspense, and adventure in tonight's transcribed story. This may hurt just a little. It began with a toothache, the lion's toothache, and a dentist, a laughing dentist. But before it wound up, there was a girl in white, a couple of patients with bad teeth, and a dead man. The dead man was the one who never got to open his mouth. It was around half past Tuesday when I wandered into the lion's office. Anthony J. was sitting behind his desk. In his hands, a towel and a couple of half-melted cubes of ice. He was taking the towel from around his jaw. Oh, hello, Jeffrey. I've been waiting for you. Trouble, Lion? Uh, this? The towel and the ice cubes? No, no trouble at all. Uh, just a toothache. Uh, but it's gone now, Jeffrey. We got a client. Uh, why, yes, Jeffrey. Just what I was going to say. Okay, out with it. Well, you see, I was feeling under the weather, the bicuspid acting up again. And so, well, I, I called a dentist. And that's when the toothache began to get better. No, no. In fact, it was terrible. I was suffering the tortures of the damned. Well, Jeffrey, I finally got in touch with this man, Dr. Beauregard. Beauregard? And he, yes, Jeffrey. Jolly Charlie Beauregard, easy credit terms? In no money down, Jeffrey. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, Jeffrey, business hasn't been going well. Remember, our last fee turned out to be stolen money, and then there was the rent. Okay, the... Lion, get on with it. You called Jolly Charlie Beauregard, the friendly credit dentist, and he said what? Well, that's what's so remarkable, Jeffrey. When I said I was president of the Lion Detective Agency... He said, could I send a man right over? And you said it was your tooth. Yes. No. I said, of course, Dr. Beauregard, right away. And he said it was important, but he'd rather not talk about it over the phone. It had something to do with $100,000. That's when you got rid of your toothache. <laughs> oh, well, Jeffrey, think of it. $100,000. <laughs> to have a toothache when a man's discussing something like that is sacrilege. <laughs> okay, Patro. I'll go see Jolly Charlie Beauregard. Yes. <laughs> oh, uh, one more thing, Jeffrey. While you're there, open up a charge account, just in case. The lion got out a pad and pencil and started calculating how many teeth you could have filled for $100,000. I headed for the main office of the friendly credit dentist. It was on Broadway in a building old before the invention of dental floss. And Jolly Charlie had a suite on the second floor. In case you didn't catch the number in the building directory, five neon signs told you to come right up and it wouldn't cost you a nickel. The last neon sign showed a smiling character waving what looked like forceps with the word welcome flashing on and off. I checked the gold in my fillings and walked in. Won't you be seated, sir? The doctor will be right with you. She was blonde and soft and smooth and slender, and she smiled once. A long, lingering, help-me-make-up-my-mind-for-me smile, and the total effect was like a shot of Nova came between the eyes. She drifted out, and I sat down and thought about it. I was still thinking about it ten minutes later when she came back out. Do you have an appointment, sir? No, but the doctor's expecting me. May I have your name, please? Jeff Regan. And may I ask who referred you to us? With all those neon signs? Please, I... I do need the information for my record. Tell him Mr. Lyon referred me. He'll know. Uh, Mr. Lyon? Like in Zoo, only with a Y. Thank you, Mr. Two minutes after that, Jolly Charlie himself came out. Well, 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 Mr. Regan, do come right in. I have everything ready for you. Yes, sir, just step this way and we'll get right down to business. <laughs> after you, Mr. Regan. <laughs> Hey, just sit right down here, Mr. Regan. It'll only take a minute. Uh, just a minute. I <laughs> Nothing don't... to worry about, Mr. Regan. We use the very latest methods here. Uh, filling is a very simple thing here. There. Hey, hey Doc, you got the wrong idea. Uh, but... Now, just oh. sit still. This is going to hurt. <laughs> Look, just Doc. A Look, Doc. Look. <laughs> uh, you may close the door, Miss King. Yes, Doc. <laughs> uh, 
Listen here, you... Uh... No, 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 Mr. Regan. We have to take every precaution, don't we? We don't want Miss King to know you aren't a patient, do we? Of course we don't. Every private detective must travel in a cloak of secrecy, I know. This has got nothing to do with my tea. Oh, I know that, Mr. Regan. You're the lion's eye. I talked to your boss only this morning. In fact, he called me. Isn't that a coincidence? Of course it is. You always answer your own questions? Now, here's a case. You're going to be interested because it's a very interesting case. Of course you are. You see, Mr. Regan, I'm being sued for $100,000. And that's a lot of money. Of course it is. I mean, I mean, sure. Uh, This young man is suing me for damaging his mouth. He's a singer. He claims he can't sing anymore because of some work I did on him. But he hasn't got a case. Oh, 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 on the contrary, he's got a wonderful case. (laughs) But uh, I just can't afford to pay him $100,000. Where do I fit in? Well, it's like this. I did do some work on a young man, but I don't think I did what he says I did. Is that clear? Sure, now, I sure. I remember a couple of fillings, a little bridge work, cleaning job, but no extractions, no surgery. That's the part that puzzles me. Uh, go on, Charlie. Uh, that's all. I'm stuck. Unless, of course, you visit this young man and straighten him out on a few things. Wait a minute. <laughs> you want me to strong arm for you? Is that well, it? Well, not exactly. I simply feel the young man is lying about something, and I want you to get him to say so. Wrong guy, laughing boy. Hire yourself a gunsel, not oh, me. Now, 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 Mr. Regan, don't get excited. I'm going to give you an open field. You handle it the way, any way you like. Just talk to this boy and see what he's up to. If you don't want to go any further after that, just come to me, say so. No obligations. Now, isn't that fair enough? Of course it is. What's his name? Uh, Robert Warner. He lives in Hollywood. I have all the data in my records. And, Mr. Regan, for merely talking to this young man, I'll pay a fee of $100. A nice fee. (laughs) Of course it is. Of course. (laughs) If, in your opinion, Robert Warner's an honest man, the case closed. I'll simply have to make the best settlement I can. Can't afford the bad publicity, you understand. Yeah, I understand. Well, call me when you get anything. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, now, that wasn't bad at all, was it, Regan? <laughs> jolly, jolly, gives the patient quick, short attention. Yeah, thanks, Doctor. <laughs> oh, just one more thing, Mr. Regan. Yes? You will be on time for your next appointment. <laughs> Good day. Robert Warner, the man who was suing Jolly Charlie, turned out to be just off Gower and Franklin. Big house sliced up into four apartments. His was ground floor left, and I rang. What answered was curly-haired, handsome, and wearing horn-rimmed glasses. Yes? Robert Warner? That's correct. Who's calling, may I ask? Jeff Regan. You got a minute? (coughs) Excuse me. It's important, sir. It is? Dr. Beauregard sent me. What? Beauregard. You'd better leave. No, wait a minute. I'm not his lawyer. Better get out, Mr. Regan. Uh Uh-uh. In! Now, uh... Sit down, Warner. We're going to talk. I said you're going to get I said sit down. I hate to be difficult. You're suing Beauregard for 100000 You know that. Your voice. You can't sing anymore because of him. If you're here to make trouble... I'm here for one reason, Warner. If you're telling the truth, you're a rich man. If not, you're in trouble. It's that simple. But but I am telling the truth, Mr. Regan. My voice, I... I was a singer. I had a career until... Until what? Until I went to him. Had a cavity in my tooth. He treated me. He told me to come back again. Like a fool, I listened to him. I went back again and again and again. Then what? I can't sing anymore, Mr. Regan. Don't you realize what that means? That's my life. Just stick to the story, Warner. Oh, he, he said something about the roof of my mouth being too small. He performed an operation. That's all there was to it. Except for one thing. What's that? I paid him $200 in dental bills to destroy my voice. Take it easy, Warner. You got an attorney handling the lawsuit for you? Why, yes. What's his name? It's not important. Doesn't matter. I said, what's his name? McLaney. He's in Hollywood. You are going to see him, Mr. Regan? Got any good reasons why I shouldn't? Mr. Regan, that... That's not all this, this fiend Dr. Beauregard has done to me. Go on. Well, it... Something more. Something terrifying. Get to the point. Come. Look outside my window. Look. Across the street. A truck. A man, Mr. Regan. The man in the truck. He's been there for a week. Ever since I brought the suit against Jolly Charlie Beauregard. Heavy set, muscular, about 28... 
Black hair, thick face. Tell you he's been watching me for a week. What else do you know about him? Nothing. I, I don't know anything. You never spoken to him? Man, that big Mr. Regan, you think I dare? Okay, okay, Warner. Control yourself. I'll talk to him. Mr. Regan, you'd be a fool. Let me decide that. Don't go out there. You don't know what he might do. I left Robert Warner crouched by the door and walked slowly across the street toward the parked truck. The big muscle-bound man didn't move from behind the driver's seat. His eyes stayed focused on the apartment building. I stopped by the side of the cab. Got a minute? I said, have you got a minute? Go away. You might get eye strain watching that window. Please, be a nice guy. Go away. You don't want to talk about it? No. Between him and me and her, I don't want to talk about it. You know the kid inside? Sort of. We're going to get better acquainted. He did something to you? Look, mister, why are you asking me all these questions? Can't you see I'm busy? And a citizen got a right to park his car and look? I ain't hurting nobody. But you're thinking about it. Maybe you're right. Maybe I was. Maybe I'm wrong. See ya. The man behind the wheel of the truck didn't look back. He swung the thing around the corner, and on the back was painted Mills Lumberyard. I made a note of that and got in my car. Next stop, the law office of a man named McClaney, Hollywood. The sign on the door said, McClaney, 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 and Phipps. I found a secretary who told me the McClaney I wanted was Howard, and he was busy. I said I was busy, too, and walked in. The secretary was right. Howard McClaney was busy. When I walked in, he was just starting on a new case. Well, well, come in. You're just in time for the party. What party? Yours and mine, of course. Here. Uh, thanks. Tell me, friend, what do you say? My name's Regan, for a starter. Oh, that's good. I'm Howard. Eddie's a woman chasing brother, and Sam, he handles income taxes. What does Phipps do? He's a reform mortician. What can I do for you, Regan? Just had a talk with your client, Robert Warner, the one who's suing Jolly Charlie Beauregard for 100000 What a case. What a case. Maybe I better warn you I'm working for the doc, not his lawyer or detective. Regan, nothing you could say would spoil this one. It's a beauty. It's, uh, that good, huh? Regan, it's perfect. The kid has the old man tied up 90 ways. Now get this. He goes to Jolly Charlie. He pays cash. Warner's an honest guy with a good voice and bad teeth. Warner spends five visits with him, and he comes out with a bad voice and good teeth. What could be better? That open and shut. Oh, even the doc's record. I had a man get photosats of everything, x-rays, number of visits, work done. All fits. That couldn't have been easy. The blonde, Regan, the blonde. The one old doc's got working for him. My man slipped her a ten spot, and she forked over every record in the place. Sweet kid. Well, that's all? Well, there's just a matter of waiting around for the hundred grand. Who knows? My client and I may get generous and settle for 75,000 cash. Well, then I guess that takes care of me. Sorry, Regan. Some bottles just come cracked that way. Thanks, Howard. See you around. Don't mention it, Regan. I'll give you a call next time there's a client looking for a fast divorce. I left Howard McClaney and headed for the hall. The elevator buzzer was a big brass knob that didn't bring any elevators. I watched white lights, red lights flick on and off and didn't get a tumble. That's how I happened to notice the door to the broom closet slightly ajar. That's how I happened to see the tips of three fingers sticking out and how I happened to move over to the door to the broom closet and take a look. A man who fell against me, hand at my feet, was big and burly and dark-haired. He was the truck driver who'd been tailing Robert Warner. Dead. The lion and I were hired to check into a $100,000 lawsuit against Jolly Charlie Beauregard, the friendly credit dentist. I met his blonde receptionist. Then the kid who was suing him. Then a truck driver. Then the attorney handling the case. The truck driver was the one who wound up dead. I called Lieutenant Bowles at Hollywood Division and waited for him to come keep me company with the corpse. 
He did, ten minutes later, with three other men. He got the dusting powder and photographic boys busy and listened to my story. Ten minutes after that, they reported back. They had everything they needed except for one slight detail. No identification, no wallet, no letters. Regan, what kind of a case did you bring me out on? Whoever killed him also took his wallet. Identify the dead man and you identify the killer. Simple, Bowles. Regan, the optimist. Now, suppose you tell me what killed him. I gave you a lead, didn't I? The dead man was a truck driver. Yeah. What about the lawyer you mentioned, McClaney? Even now, he's probably sitting in his office less than 25 feet from the scene of the crime, sipping soda through a straw. And I'm going to go have a talk with him. Good idea, Bowles. He's probably got an alibi. You said that truck driver was tailing McClaney's client, the one suing the dentist. Unless you're lying, these people fit somewhere, right? That's your theory. Regan, I don't like your attitude today. I don't like it at all. You stick around. I'm not through with you. I'll be in the lobby making a phone call. If you want me, Lieutenant, just dial. That's the way it was with Bowles, the friendly type. I headed down to the lobby of the office building. An idea was buzzing around somewhere in my head, and I had to get it out. My boss, Anthony J. Lyon, was the man to get it out with. Detective Me, Lion. Anthony. Jeffrey. What's wrong with you, Fatso? Oh, it's my bicuspid, Jeffrey. It's bothering me again. Did you talk to Dr. Beauregard? Sure thing, Lion. He, did he say he could arrange an appointment soon? Well, as a matter of fact, we didn't get around to... Jeffrey, t- no! Me sitting here suffering the pains of all creation. My tooth is seething hotbed of torture. Jeffrey, you must do something at once. I'm dying. There's one in line ahead of you. you what does that mean? I checked with Beauregard. He was being sued for $100,000. Then I went to see the kid who was suing him. Oh, Jeffrey, can't you spare me the details? Wait a minute. This is where you come in. There was a truck driver tailing this kid, the one suing the dentist. I found the truck driver in a closet. I know just how he feels. Lion, he's dead. And he's luckier than I am. Okay, okay, you'll get sympathy, but first you've got a job to do. Call Mills Lumberyard. That was the name of the truck he was driving. Find out which truck driver is overdue. The man we're trying to identify is heavy set. Black hair, blue eyes, deep voice, false teeth. Oh, lucky fellow. Well, he weighs about 200, maybe 5 feet 10, but that's a guess. You get that? Yes, Jeffrey, I'm taking it all down. Okay, I'll check back with you. Get that truck driver's name. Very well, but there's just one thing. What's that? When when I pass on, Jeffrey, will you make the necessary arrangements? Get busy, lion. You may have time to earn just one more fee. Like Bowles had said, somewhere there was a connection between the dead man and the $100,000 lawsuit. Somehow the dead man was linked to an attorney and a dentist. There was just one catch. The cops didn't know who he was or what killed him. My client was the dentist and I headed for his office in a hurry. Oh, Mr. Regan. Did you have another appointment this afternoon? This one's ad lib. The doctor in? Well, Dr. Beauregard is busy with a patient. But then if you don't mind waiting, perhaps we might squeeze you in. You don't have to ask me twice. Mr. <laughs> How long have you worked here, Miss, um... King. Louise King. I've been with the doctor almost six months. You remember a patient named Robert Warner? Yes. Yes, I do. He's the one who's suing the doctor, isn't he? He's the one. Uh, tell me, Louise, how many times did Warner visit Beauregard? Well, I'd, I'd have to check the records for that, Mr. Regan. I- I'm sure they'd give a complete... You mean the Mr. records you loaned to Warner's attorney so he could photostat them? Why, oh, Mr. Don't Regan... Don't play coy with me, Louise. Warner's attorney, attorney told me his man got every record he asked for. He had them photoed and returned them to the files. It cost him ten bucks. Mr. Regan, I, I didn't mean anything. Sure, sure. The ten bucks look good to you. Ten bucks pays for enough evidence to win a hundred thousand dollar case. Oh, Mr. King... Oh. Well, it's Mr. Regan. <laughs> well, 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 indeed, just the man I'm looking for. How's that? The phone in my private office just rang. It was for you, Mr. Regan. Now, isn't that odd? Anyone should phone you here. Of course it is. Maybe not. Uh, oh, well, well, you can't find out unless you answer it. Uh, this way, Mr. Regan. <laughs> I followed Beauregard to the phone. It was the lion. He found out plenty from Mills Lumberyard. The dead man's name was Jack Matson. He'd been working for him less than a week. Originally came from a little town in New Mexico, Three Wells, population 360. But that wasn't all the lion had to say. Lieutenant Bowles had phoned him and said he wanted me down at the morgue to identify the body. I hung up and called Bowles. He gave me plenty to think about. The autopsy showed Jack Matson, the truck driver, had died of arsenic poisoning. 
Oh, I hope it wasn't bad news, Mr. Regan. In a way, Doc. It was the police. Oh, the police? Oh, dear. No, no, no. That is bad news, isn't it? They want us down at headquarters. All of us. All of us? You and me and your assistant, Miss King. Uh, but, but, uh, but, but, Mr. Regan, I have uh, patience waiting. I, uh, well, the I police, just can't Dr. Uh, Beauregard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, I'll get my coat. And Thomas King to get hers. Uh, yes, Mr. Regan. Oh, uh, one more thing, Doc. While you're doing that, you mind if I look through your files? My my files? What? Well, no, 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 Mr. Regan. You go... Go right ahead. Beauregard hurried off to the next room. I heard him telling Louise King to get her coat. That gave me time to dig through the doctor's files, his personal files... I found something and checked it against a wall map of the USA. I needed one thing more. It was a thick and official-looking book, and I checked the index in the back for the letter A. It fit. Every piece of it, and I had the answer. Less than half an hour later, Doc Beauregard and Louise King and I met Lieutenant Bowles in the morgue. With him was Howard McClaney, the attorney, and Robert Warner, the complainant. It was a nice group study, especially when you considered one of them was a murderer. All right. Call you people here to identify a body. Man was murdered less than two hours ago, and it's my hunch that one of you, if not all of you, know this man. Harry? Yeah, Lieutenant? Show him. Okay, Lieutenant. Yeah. Over there under that sheet is a dead man. Who's first? Yeah, I don't know. Is there one to go? All right, all right. Somebody got to start it. Well, you know this man, step up and say so. Take a look, make up your minds. One by one, they moved over to the slab, looked, grimaced, then moved back quickly. First the lawyer, McClaney. Then the kid, Robert Warner. He said it was the same guy who'd been tailing him, that's all. Then Louise King, the dentist's assistant. Then Jolly Charlie Beauregard. It was the first time I'd seen the doc without a smile. Then Bowles turned to me. Okay, Regan, you're next. I found him, remember? Take a look, just to be sure. Okay, Well, I know him. What? What? Regan, are you playing tricks with me? His name is Jack Matson. He worked at the Mills Lumber Yard. He's from a town in New Mexico, three wells. Regan, have you been lying to me? I found out after he was killed, Bowles. And I kept my mouth shut for one reason. Like what? I saw the name of the company the truck driver worked for. It was painted on the back of the truck. Warner must have seen that, too, but he didn't say anything. No, no, I didn't. Honest, I didn't see it. You kept your mouth shut, Warner, because you were into something. Because when the truck driver turned up dead, you knew you were in too deep. That's not true. I'm not in any... A $100,000 lawsuit against Jolly Charlie Bora. That has nothing to do with... With murder? Don't count on it, Warner. Jack Matson was killed because of $100,000. He was killed because he found out the lawsuit was a phony. That's fantastic, Regan. It's as good a case as I've ever seen. Lieutenant, what's this all about? All in McClaney. What's with this lawsuit, Regan? I'll show you. Doc, you admit working on the kid, Warner? Yes, yes, I did, Mr. Regan, but I'm sure I didn't do the things he said I did. Except... Except that your records show otherwise. Your records show you did perform oral surgery, and you can't prove you didn't. Your word against his and the records. Oh, yes, yes, that's exactly it. Then suppose I tell you the records are phony, doctored up, fixed, so that every job you did on Warner was made to look twice as complicated, made to look that way with Warner's permission. No, you're lying, I... I didn't kill that man. I didn't. I didn't say that, Warner. But you have an idea who did. Our little girl named Louise King. You can't prove that, Regan. Regan, you making charges? Have a little patience, Bulls. Jack Matson was from Three Wells, New Mexico. Dr. Beauregard's personal files show his employee, Louise King, is from Tremble, New Mexico. I checked that on a map in the doc's office. The two towns are less than 30 miles apart. That doesn't prove anything. Uh, go on, Regan. Jack Matson was Louise King's hometown boyfriend. When I talked to Matson in front of Warner's house, he said, it's between him and me and her. It didn't mean anything at the time. The her was Louise King. No. I never heard of him before. He came to Los Angeles to see his girl. He thought she was two-timing him with Robert Warner. So he tailed Warner and tumbled to her lawsuit gimmick. When he decided to go to Warner's attorney and tell him the truth, Louise King killed him. He's lying, Lieutenant. You had access to Beauregard's supply of arsenic. It's used to kill the nerves in the tooth. I checked that. You knew how to use a hypodermic. You tricked Matson into talking to you in the broom closet. You gave him the needle and took his wallet. If they couldn't identify him, he'd never connect with you, and you could go ahead with the lawsuit you and Warner planned. I didn't have anything to do with it, Mr. Regan. Oh, so our canary can warble again. Yeah, it was her idea. All her idea. 
She told me she could fix the records. All I'd have to do is quit singing. Say my voice was ruined. Shut up! She said I'd get $50,000 that way. It seemed so easy. Easy? It was perfect. If Jack Matson, a nice guy looking for his girl, hadn't walked into it, Matson was fool enough to be in love with Louise King. Get away from me! Uh, Miss King! You won't touch me! I won't let you touch me! Mr. Regan, stop her! She's got a hypodermic needle! A hypodermic needle! Drop it, Miss King! Drop it! Doc, Doc, come Doc, come back here! Let you go of me! Miss King! Yeah, that's enough, lady! <laughs> Oh, she tried to kill me. Do you see that? She tried to kill me. Oh, Doc, you're okay. She was going to kill me with that needle all along. Oh, no, no, Doc, not you. She wasn't trying to defend herself against five men with a hypodermic needle. She was trying to save the state the cost of gas. Louise King got up and went quietly. Robert Warner wasn't far behind her, but at least he could count on seeing daylight sooner than she would. Doc Beauregard and the attorney Howard McClaney and I went up to the doc's office for a drink. McClaney left about six, but the doc kept me cornered with stories of bravery above and beyond the call of dentistry until close to seven. That's when the door to Doc's private office burst open. Uh huh. So here you are, you scoundrel. Anthony J. Regan, you dirty rat. Me waiting back at the office alone with my aching by cuspid and you just sitting here. I might have known you wouldn't do anything about my tooth. Doc, this is my boss, Anthony J. Lyon. Lyon, Doc Beauregard, yes. the friendly credit dentist. No money down. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Lyon. I've heard a lot of nice things about your by cuspid. You aren't? <laughs> I've been telling the doc how you suffer. He's interested in your case. Really, Jeffrey? Really, you told it? An interesting case, isn't it, Mr. Lyon? Of course it is. And I think I have just the thing that will cure it. You have? <laughs> Step right up here in the chair. Oh, Doctor, I'm in terrible shape. The tooth has been bothering me all day, ever since I phoned you this morning. You don't know the agony I've been through. The hours. Stop <laughs> roaring, Lyon. Doc's going to fix you up fine. Just fine. He is, eh? Good. <laughs> I hope that drill doesn't hurt too much. Looks wicked. Ready, yeah. Mr. Lyon? Anything to get it fixed. Yeah, open wide. Uh, uh, that patient that was just carried out had exactly the same thing wrong, didn't he, Doc? Uh, I don't care if he was carried out. I, I've got to be brave. I've got to get this tooth out. Get started, Doctor. It's killing me. Okay, hang on. It's going to hurt. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, Doc. By the way, Lion, here's the doc's check for one hundred dollars. Oh, hey, let me see that, Jeffy. Oh my, one hundred beautiful plans. Hey, well, come along, Jeffy, my boy. Let's get out of here. What about your tooth? Your tooth? You're aching by cuspid. You by cuspid? Well, what do you know? It doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so darn funny? Okay, here's the other hundred, Regan. Uh, thank Jeffrey, you, thank you. Jeffrey, why is he giving you another hundred dollars? Oh, it's simple, Lion. I just bet the doc our fee, double or nothing, I could cure your toothache quicker than he could. <laughs> Jeff Regan, Investigator, is written by William Frug, produced and directed by Sterling Tracy, and stars Paul Dubov as Regan, with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. Original music is by Dick Garant. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is transcribed each week at the same time over CBS. Dick Cutting speaking, and inviting you to be with us again for more suspense, mystery, and adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator.